even when we know the Lord, and walk with him, and have done exploits in his name, it is easy for us not to consult him on a particular matter. David had been instructed by the prophet of the Lord to stay in Judah, but he despaired of ever getting free of Saul's attacks, and so had moved down into Philistine territory, where he was accepted because he was obviously at war with the king of Israel. And David, with his men, had settled into the town of Ziklag and gone raiding against the enemies of Israel, but telling Achish, the king of Gath, that he was raiding against the people of Judah. And so we have this great deception going on. David really wanting to do the right thing for God. But in that chapter, we didn't see him asking God. We see him acting according to his own wisdom. This isn't really the David that we've come to know. And it's going to get him into hot water. Now it happened in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for war to fight with Israel. And Achish said to David, You assuredly know that you will go out with me to battle, you and your men. So David said to Achish, Surely you know what your servant can do. And Achish said to David, Therefore I will make you one of my chief guardians forever. Now Samuel had died, and all Israel had lamented for him and buried him in Ramah in his own city. And Saul had put the Medians and the Spiritists out of the land. Then the Philistines gathered together and came and encamped at Shunem. So Saul gathered all Israel together, and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his army trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim, or by the prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Find me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. His servant said to him, In fact, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes, and he went and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he said, Please, conduct a seance for me, Bring up for me the one I shall name to you. Then the woman said to him, Look, you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the Medians and the Spiritists from the land. Why then do you lay a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? And he said, Bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. And the king said to her, Do not be afraid. What did you see? And the woman said to Saul, I saw a spirit ascending out of the earth. So he said to her, What is his form? And she said, An old man is coming up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed down. Now Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? And Saul answered, I am deeply distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me and does not answer me any more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called you, that you may reveal to me what I should do. Then Samuel said, So why do you ask me, seeing the Lord has departed from you and has become your enemy, and the Lord has done for himself as he spoke by me, for the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbour, David because you did not obey the voice of the Lord, nor execute his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with you into the hand of the Philistines. 
and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also deliver the army of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Immediately Saul fell full length on the ground and was dreadfully afraid because of the words of Samuel, and there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no food all day or all night. And the woman came to Saul and saw that he was severely troubled, and said to him, Look, your maidservant has obeyed your voice, and I have put my life in my hands, and heeded the words which you spoke to me. Now therefore please, heed also the voice of your maidservant, and let me set a piece of bread before you, and eat, that you may have strength when you go on your way. But he refused, and said, I will not eat. So his servants, together with the woman, urged him, and he heeded their voice. Then he arose from the ground and sat on the bed. Now the woman had a fatted calf in the house, and she hastened to kill it. And she took flour and kneaded it and baked unleavened bread from it. So she brought it before Saul and his servants, and they ate. Then they rose and went away that night. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we read a chapter which is most unusual in that it presents before us something that is forbidden in the scriptures, a seance, Saul calling on a medium, and Samuel speaking from the grave to Saul. So the first thing that we learn then is that these spiritual things are real, but they are forbidden to us. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. And God has forbidden us to seek knowledge from the grave. But Saul cannot help himself. He is disobedient to the core. But first, the context. David has fled to the Philistines. Now the Philistines have risen up that they might wipe out Israel. They've raised a large army. The Philistines live in the south. Saul is up north, which is where the battle will take place. And Achish expects David to fight with him against Israel. And David seems to affirm that, yes, he will go. This is surely putting David in a very awkward position. Saul wants help. He's always been nervous to go into battle. He's gone into battle many times. But without Samuel, who has died... And without David, he's never had decisive battles against the Philistines. And he has no confidence this time. Under the influence of Samuel, he had driven out witchcraft, sorcery. He had sent all the medians and spiritists out of the land. But when he calls on God, God does not answer him. God leaves him to his own devices, because God has determined that Saul will die. So Saul turns to the medians. And of course, as always, Saul's servants do know that there still is one median in the land, even though she keeps a low profile. Saul disguises himself and comes to her and asks her to bring up Samuel, and Samuel comes up from the grave. We know from Jesus' teaching that when a person dies, they gather into Sheol, also known as Hades in Greek. And in Sheol, there were two companies of people separated by a great gulf, a portion of torment and a portion of peace where Abraham was. And Samuel was obviously gathered in that place and from that place did return. And among the things that he says to Saul and his sons, you will be with me. So Saul is counted among the righteous, even though he has been a disobedient servant and his role as king of Israel is almost over. Samuel brings that message of judgment from the Lord. You have disobeyed the Lord, so the Lord can no longer work with you. Tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. Saul is distraught. But life must go on. The woman and his servants urge him to eat, and reluctantly he does, and goes and faces 
the music. 